Good morning, Assistant Chief Chris Butler. The first one I'm going to discuss is the one that happened at 2740 Division Street. The victim in this case is James Thomas, black male, 14. The suspect, the suspects in this case, the first one is William Brown, black male, 18. Glenn Schofield, black male, 19. And Michael Wiggins, black male, 17. On Friday, July 11th at 1.50 p.m., police officers were dispatched to Johnny Walker Park at 2740 Division Street for a shooting. The police officers found our victim suffering from a gunshot wound. The victim was transported to the hospital and later died. According to witnesses, a blue car was seen leaving the area. Uh, and, and let me back up a little bit. According to witnesses, he had a blue car that pulled up in the parking lot. Um, gunfire erupted from inside the vehicle, outside, um, shooting at our victim. One of the projectiles actually struck and killed our victim. He was transported to the hospital, but did, in fact, later died, as I mentioned. Um, suspect Wiggins, we determined, was the driver of the car. He was charged with accessory after the fact and arrested on August 29, 2014. Suspect Schofield, we determined to be one of the shooters that was in the car. Schofield was charged with murder and arrested on August 27, 2014. And then our primary suspect is Suspect Brown. Uh, he was the he was also a shooter, and we determined that he was the actual one that fired the fatal round, killing our victim. And he was arrested on September 25th uh, yesterday and charged with murder. And I'll take any questions that you might have about this one. Any motive, uh, uh, Assistant Chief Butler, yes, Roger sir. from First Coast News. Uh, any motive for this, or uh, would you piece together? I mean, we're looking at all teenagers here. Yeah, they are. Uh, the really the only explanation that I have for this, they knew of each other, uh, but the suspects were upset with the victim because he was dating uh, a girl that they knew, and they didn't approve of that relationship. It was a spontaneous act that happened. It wasn't anything that was predetermined or anything at all. They just happened to see him pull up in the car and started firing shots at the, as you know, a crowded swimming pool area uh, on that day. Gary Gillum, uh, Todd Jr. Um, was there any uh, relationship with the men in the car, the teenagers in the car, and the girlfriend of this guy? They, they, they knew each other. Um, you mean as far as they weren't like a relative? They yeah. weren't. Um, how, this is Kamasi here in Channel 4. How are you able to determine which uh, of the suspects did what? Who was the shooter? Who was driving away? Did they cooperate with your investigation in that respect as far as telling who did what? They, I would say, two of the suspects, one not being Brown. Brown didn't necessarily give us any information. Um, two of the three actually confessed. Brown did not, uh, which kind of gave us that information. Plus, also the group. As far as determining, you know, who it was, we did recover some evidence. Uh, we did recover one of the guns, uh, but through, you know, through our investigation and everything, um, like I said, we were able to determine that Brown is the one, in fact, that did fire the fatal shot through the uh, co-defendants as well as uh, other information that we have in the investigation. Does that answer it? There you go, on time, Union. Um, what type of guns were they shooting? Was it just handguns, or was it? Was it did they have a AK-47? No, they, they, they were actually two separate handguns. Uh, they were different caliber. That's how we were able to determine that what Brown was using was the one actually and fired that shot. How many times was the victim shot? Uh, one time. Do we know? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. How many times was there, how many shots did they fire? I don't, I don't know that answer. Okay. Multiple yeah. shots were fired. We're just fortunate nobody else was harmed. Right. Bottom line, not strangers. And it was, it had to deal with a, a girlfriend. Absolutely. Do you know where they got the weapons from? I do not. Anything else on this one? Can you talk about just the space in between the arrests? I mean, one arrest came a month after, almost a month after the first arrest. Can you discuss that a little bit? Um, it's pretty much, you know, as, as, and, and in this case, um, it just, sometimes with the processing of evidence, interviewing witnesses and everything, um, we start to develop key pieces of information. Um, as you know, early on, we were able to make the arrest um, of that one. But you know, really with this, it's just a matter of we just want to make sure that we do the investigation as thoroughly and as factually as possible. Um, really, you know, it's one of those things that we take away from this is that even though the crime happened back in July, you know, we continuously work these cases. They 
working tenaciously um, and really unceasing until they make an arrest in the case. And really, the homicide team that we have back there, I mean, you've, had, you've got community involvement in this. Um, Detective Donna Beasley is actually the lead detective in this case. Um, it just it kind of takes time for the pieces to fall together. And Yvette Watson that's on here, is she the young woman that's involved, or can I have some clarity on that? Um, I'll have to get that for you. I don't have 